hello good morning welcome to my channel learn with aisha so i hope you all are having a great time let us start with our the next part of the same unit that is the excretion system in the previous class which we have studied and discussed about the introduction to excretion what are the its needs or substances involved and the organs which are involved in the excretion process and even we have studied about the uh, uh, human excretory system and their working process so today we are going to go in details little bit more details about the physiology um, physiology of excretion so let us know how this urine is formed uh, how the formation of urine which is the main part for the internal structure of the urine to be studied so today we are going to study in detail about the physiology of excretion so the formation of urine is accomplished in the three ways or in the three steps that is the first is the ultrafiltration second is selective reabsorption and third is tubular secretion so you uh, you might have all known the average uh, amount of urine which is uh, produced in 24 hours is 1 to 1.5 liter and which are it is colored because due to the presence of urochromo pigment present in the in the urine so let us know details about the um, formation of urine the first step where we are going to study about this is the ultrafiltration so what do you mean by ultrafiltration the bowman's capsules of kidney are act as a ultra filters that means just give me a second i hope you are able to see this these are the bowman's capsules which are present and they are distal in convoluted tubules and these are the called as the ultra filtration or ultra ultra filtrase filters they lies in close contact with the glomular or glomular or glomerulus tubes and where the blood flow through the glomular capillaries is separated from the cavity of this bone capsules and only by two or by very thin layers or thin membrane um, of this uh, glomerular capillaries where the endothelial layer of capillaries and epithelial layers are capsules uh, both layers are one to cell thick and lies in close contact as you can see they are in lies to very close in contacts the diameter of these are different uh, 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 arteoles as more than that of the efferent arteoles therefore the main uh, the main uh, process or the main function is to produce the hydrostatic pressure of blood in glomerular uh, capillaries is higher than that of the hydrostatic pressure in the bowen's capsules that means the water and the solute molecules are passed from the blood plasma diffused out into the bowen's capsule this process of filtration of blood is known as the ultra filtration so as a result of ultra filtration almost all the substances that are dissolved in plasma except the blood corpuscles urea glucose uh, amino acids and some vitamins inorganic salts collides and certain proteins are filtered out this filtered liquid is known as the nephritic filter or the glomerular glomerular filters um, in man is about around 125 ml of ml per unit uh, to around 180 liters of nephritic filter is formed per day that means in 24 hours in 24 hours so let us move to the second one that is the selective that is the selective reabsorption so this is the second step where during ultra filtration even those substances which are valuable to the body and are hence necessary for a body metabolism are also diffused out into the nephri nephric filter filtrate and this help for the removal of plasma during the ultra filtration is harmful to the body therefore usually or useful substances are reabsorbed once they are removed again it is reabsorbed into the blood for this purpose the efferent areoles forms the network 
this network uh, forms this network of capillaries around the neck these convoluted tubules are the hence loop hen, henless loop oop, uh, of uni uh, uniferous tubules behind the network so this help in the reabsorption of these important substances which are required for the body body this selective reabsorption in pro, um, proximal convoluted tube approximately all the glucose amino acid and some of the inorganic salt are reabsorbed from these nephritic filters and this help in the blood for peri tubular capillaries and return back to the blood in the ascending limbs or active absorption of sodium chloride takes place without the help of a water hence reabsorption of water in hence henless loop where water from the nephritic filter is reabsorbed into the blood in a process of osmosis in the region of hence loop and is convoluted tubes and its convoluted tubules if the blood contain more water the water the reabsorption of water is less been taken and excreted out urine is diluted and um, removed back from the body in case of water concentration in the blood is less then more water is being reabsorbed from the nephritic filters that is basically it according to the requirements of the body according to the requirements of the body water level is being reabsorbed whether it is more or it is being less it depends on the requirements of the body thus kidney help in the osmo regulation in this way around 180 liters of glomerulus filter changes takes place into 1 to 1.5 liters of urine is being excreted out in per day or 24 hours the urine is left with urea water and certain salts then is the third that is the tubular secretion so what is this tubular secretion it is nothing but the the excretory product left in the blood capillaries are excreted out into the urine urine ferrous tubules by diffusion and the keratinin and sodium uh, uh, sorry potassium are excreted from the blood into the nephritic filters so this help in the, the overall physiology or formation of urine and from the ultra filtration and reabsorption of water to the removal of the urine or the excess of product which are not necessary for the body is being takes place in the uh, uh, nephron which is being placed by a nephron that is the ultra filtration of blood through the glomerulus absorption or corpuscles as you can just have a look with this structure of the nephron in detail where you can just go through how water and some salt and nitrogenous waste like urea keratinin are secreted out and here is the collecting tube where it is been urine is been excreted out from there you can just have a look in the structure so you can just see the important parts of nephron you which you need to be remembered first is the glomerulus bowman's capsules proximal convoluted tubes henless loop distal convoluted tube so around 90% of the water is being uh, available in our body and 5% of the dissolved solid particles or the solid substances so let us move to the function of kidney so what are the functions the kidney performs the function of kidney is the osmo regulation and maintenance of water balance whenever our body required water it kidney is the one which is going to provide us the next is the regulation of blood volume hemoglobin is being maintained then acid base acid base balance in the blood is being maintained or it is being taken care by the kidneys so elimination of abnormal product and excessive heat such as which we have studied such as water some salt nitrogenous products waste like urea keratinin and all those products which are not necessary or which are excess is been removed with the help of the kidney 
so i think you all know how much important to keep our kidneys in healthy condition so whenever such in abnormalities or such defect which we come across in the kidney or in the renal system where we see kidney transplant or dialysis or artificial kidney so which we are going to study in the next class where we are we are going to see how this kidney transplant a small introduction or the basic information on kidney transplantation and how the dialysis works and on what condition the patient or the can undergo a dialysis condition okay uh, just make sure that you please don't forget to like subscribe and share with your other friends to my channel and develop your knowledge thank you so much see you in the next class